But what Guru, is I my have a question? I have a, I have a question. How do you pronounce your name? Oh, Vyom. Vyom. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Flight Socket. With us, we have a leading student in biochemistry and a member of the FSC club, Anisha Vora. And with her, she's gotten an extremely special guest, Dr. Anselm D'Souza, who's a director at Viridis Biopharma Private Limited and Programa. He's a PhD in industrial microbiology from St. Xavier's College and University of Mumbai. His area of speciali specialization is a strain of improvement of high fermentation metabolites and introducing disruptive technologies to value-added fermentation. With over 35 years of experience in his area, encompassing several metabolites, vitamins, enzymes, and growth pro promoters, he has numerous publications and patents based on his inventions. He was the managing director and one of the promoters of Synergia Life Sciences Private Limited, which was acquired by the Dan Danish fermentation major Novozymes. Synergia Life Sciences Private Limited manufactured of manufacturing of vitamin K27 with numerous patents, clinically validated products, and international accolades that had positioned it as a ma major leader in its field. Okay, so my first question is, what exactly is microbiology? Yeah, so um, microbiology is the study of microbes. The microbes are all around us. It's in the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat. When you fall sick, it is of microbes. When you are healthy, it's because of microbes. So they are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. And, you know, it came into focus during the era of COVID. A few years back, when the world went through the pandemic, you, everybody started ha sanitizing their hands and using disinfectants. And so then the awareness that this is a microbe which has caused the diseases it was more pronounced. Microbes can be good, they can be bad. So the study of microbes, it depends on which field you are in. Now the field which I am in is the harnessing of the uh, microbes to produce valuable uh, drugs, nutraceuticals, products, which are useful for human health. So that's the field I work in. Okay, thank you so much. And that was very interesting. And I had another question is like currently I'm a student too and Anisha is also a student and we are going to go for our undergraduate degrees probably in India or abroad. And we just wanted to know that why did you choose to focus on microbiology? Like, okay, so in my generation, you know, when we finished our 12th, most of us either used to focus on science uh, the, the people in science is either focus to get into engineering college or get into a medical college. And uh, in those days, the number of seats were very, very less. So I was more inclined towards the medical area. So when I didn't get into the medical area, I chose the next uh, best was microbiology because as I just told you, it is related to the medical field. And it has a lot of avenues to do research. I was al always research uh, inclined <clears throat> and in retrospect i think it is good i didn't get into medicine because the uh, then your field is very narrow you are only working on treatment of uh, diseases and helping people to live a healthy life so yeah i could work in a vast diverse area which is uh, a very close i would say the cousin of the medical field but my uh, my uh, uh, avenues of research are far more. Oh, that's great. Because my next question is kind of related to what you just said. As you said, like the medical path is a bit narrow. So I was really interested as to what are the various career prospects you can have with microbiology or studying uh, a related field and not exactly the narrow medical path. Yeah, so I'll, let me talk, not talk now about the medical part because uh, you have already mentioned quite a bit. You know, so the other part of my microbiology is, say, if you want to grow good crops, it's agricultural microbiology. So the bacteria are there in the soil and there are certain bacteria which fix nitrogen from the atmosphere. So you can work in that area and, you know, help in 
improving the quality of crops. As uh, today, everybody talks about sustainability and uh, green uh, processes. So these fertilizers, what we call biofertilizers, they are a form of green uh, energy. You are saving the earth from polluting chemicals. So this, to give you, is one example. Then you can also look at wastewater treatment. You know, there's a field of microbiology which, where we add beneficial uh, microbes to the wastewater and treat the water of all the pollutants and recycle the water back into the system. This is another very important feat. Talking about waste, you read in the paper that, you know, in uh, Mumbai, that Devnar gar garbage dump, they want to treat the waste. That's a leg It's called the legacy waste, which has built up over uh, uh, tens of years, and now it's in, into few lakhs of tons of waste. Again, we have to use microbes for bioremediation. So this is a field called bioremediation. So these are a few examples aside from microbiology, which I, except, uh, aside from medical microbiology, which one can look at. Thank you so much. And I think the next question, the next few questions Anisha is going to ask you, which are much more detailed into your career and deeper into microbiology. Sure. Okay. Um, so I understand that you're working a lot with the vitamin K2 and also that a lot of people aren't even aware of how important this vitamin is for the body. So like, what would you say, like, why is it so important to include in our diet? Yeah. So if you know that the name of our company is Viridis. Viridis means green. So when we started this company in 1999, we decided to focus on healthy living because most, uh, at that time there was a drug for arthritis, which was treating the arthritis, but causing people to have tremendous side effects, which were worse than the arthritis. So we started to focus on uh, these uh, healthy treatments. And one of the targets we looked at was vitamin K27. Because people in Japan were taking this vitamin and not only they found that, you know, they, uh, they were living to a very healthy age, long life, but the ladies were not su suffering from hip fractures. Because as you grow older, because of osteoporosis, your bones become weak and you get fractured. We decided to look at it because number one, it showed a lot of potential. And number two, there were very few people in the world. There were just two other companies who were making it. And since it was being made by fermentation, which is uh, the strength of our company and uh, my area of expertise, we decided to plunge into that. Then uh, later on, we found that the whole world was focusing only on cardiovascular and uh, bone health. That basically is involved in calcium metabolism. It guides the calcium to the bones and away from the arteries. So that way it keeps your heart healthy and your bones healthy. But we found a lot of other indications where it gives you extra energy, it helps in uh, neuropathy, and we have taken out patents on those. Okay. Um, so that was really insightful. Um, I just wanted to understand that since this was started, like years and years ago, what are some of the challenges that you all faced in the manufacturing of this vitamin? Yeah, so as, as I told you, the, the there were two major challenges. Now, number one, very few people were manufacturing it. So nothing much was known about the process. If, if uh, many people are manufacturing, then there are papers published how to manufacture, how to increase the yield. So one challenge was to develop a unique process for the manufacturer and manufacture it economically. Because if you want to make it affordable, it has to be economical. The price when we started manufacturing was $500, uh, $500 per gram, which made it one of the most expensive products in the world. So when, at the end, when we finished off with uh, Synergia, we had dropped down the price to $100 per gram because we used to manufacture at a very high concentration. <clears throat> so basically the bacteria throws out vitamin K27 and the more you get it to throw out vitamin K27, the cheaper it performs. That was one hardship which we had to solve. And the other difficulty was to educate the medical profession 
on the use of the vitamin because not much was known about it. So we had to do a lot of clinical trials. We had to do a lot of publications and we had to develop the information which we will be disseminated to the drug companies and the drug companies then transfer that to the doctors. Okay, understood. Oh, um, one second. Also... Before Anisha asks the follow-up question, I just wanted to ask one thing, which I was very interested about because I feel it's a bit related to economics also. Uh, it is basically regarding how did your, what major factor do you feel drove up the demand for your, uh, for, for K2 the most? Yeah. So when people started seeing the effects, we started getting feedback from the doctors, you know, that this is really working and people are getting benefit. And once that happens in India and abroad, when one company succeeds, with a product which is in the market, then there are a lot of me too's. They also want to jump on the bandwagon. So then the demand went up. As the demand went up, the popularity increased and it started trending on social media and there were more articles published. So basically it came into the scientific uh, limelight. Thank you. Okay. So... I understand that you've switched to like botanicals and supplements. So what is the synergy in this? Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, the switch was uh, actually a rational switch because vitamin K27 when we started was a supplement. So we switched to other and we were also making probiotics which were supplements. So then we decided to switch to uh, plant-based extracts uh, due to the fact that, again, there are a lot of plants which are beneficial, but they are not studied scientifically. I do not know if you all are aware, but aspirin, are you all familiar with aspirin? Yeah. 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 So aspirin is basically was invented from a plant because more than 3,500 years back, the willow bark was chewed by uh, Egyptians and Sumerians to reduce fever, reduce pain. And in 1897, a German scientist from uh, Bayer Pharmaceuticals, he isolated it from the bark and then they started manufacturing it chemically. So that was, if you can, so you, if I can summarize, aspirin is basically a plant extract. Similarly, 11% of the drugs in the market today to treat cancer and various ailments are all originally identified from plants. So plants are known to have uh, beneficial uh, effects for human health. The only thing is they are not studied scientifically. So we decided to set up our research labs and see how the, or the plant is helping in uh, curing disease. So basically look at the rationale. It's very similar to what we did in vitamin K27. We try to see how the K2 is affecting various pathways in the human body. Okay. Um, also, one last question that I had is that, like, could you, like, would you be able to explain the manufacturing process of, of K2? Of K2, yeah. I can, I, I, I can actually, I've worked with it for so many years that I can talk talk in my sleep about K2. It's not an issue. So we, we start with the, the most important thing in vitamin K in any fermentation is the microorganism. So in this case, it was a mi microorganism called Bacillus lichniformis. Now, I think, I do not know if you all have studied anything about uh, bacteria, but Bacillus is one of the largest species in the uh, the mi microbial kingdom. So th this bacillus lichniformis, it produces K2, but it produces K2 for its own use because it gets energy out of K2 by e electron transport chain. What we did is we made it overproduce K2 by various methods. That's what's called strain improvement. Then we grow it in a small flask with media. And media is food for the bacteria. And we, we start with a 50 ml culture in the shaker. 
then we ramp it up to 1000 liters then that is a seed at that point it is only producing biomass then we transfer it into the fermenter and we give it nutrients and a very good environment to grow See, just like in the house you want to put on the ac and you want to you want light the same thing the bacteria wants the correct temperature he wants the correct environment to grow well so once we give the bacteria that it starts throwing out k2 at a certain stage when it is maximum we stop the fermenter and then we have to extract it so we we want now only the k2 in the pure form so by a series of solvents we take out the k2 then we distill off the solvents and then there is a rigorous process of testing to see that you are getting the correct quality so once that is done we get what is bulk k2 which is then sold to pharmaceutical industry where they convert it to capsules tablets etc the whole process from the inoculating the bug to the flask to getting the first gram of k2 will take anywhere between 16 to 21 days thank you so okay. much and i have just one last follow up question which i'm guessing many of our viewers would also want to know is what is the next best place to look in microbio in the microbiology world which is untapped like how you said that k2 was something that many people didn't know about is there another kind of micro microbiome that you feel that people don't know that much about or there's less awareness and that's a great place to start in today's day and age yeah see so what i would advise see i, I do a lot of uh, a mentoring for people who you know want to know about uh, what do they do See, most people will go to the well uh, trodden path, but there are areas which you can look at. For example, there are certain students who have gone to journalism, and they have found that their knowledge of microbiology is very useful. So that is one thing. There are people who have gone into social sciences. There again, the knowledge of microbiology is helpful because um, you know when you want to help people in in social work. basic thing is like hygiene and uh, in fact there is a certain probiotic which is given in rural areas just after childbirth it helps in alleviating a, a a very debilitating disease called nec that's enterocolitis the children get diarrhea and they die so just by giving this particular probiotic and if you have the knowledge of that you can save lives if you are in the social service field so there are very diverse areas which one can look at you need not only go into fermentation you need not only go into the medical field or become a lab technician which most people do so you can look at these less well trodden paths thank you so much i'll keep that in mind and in fact that's one thing that i really like that it kind of reminded me of that poem by robert frost which is take the path less taken and that will make all of the difference Thank you so much for those words. I think Anisha I'll just uh, well, yeah. Let me wish you all all the best in your further studies and whatever career you all choose. Thank you. Just keep an open mind and think out of the box. Don't let thank anybody you. tell you that this this has to be done this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you, Doctor Desuza, for taking the time to join us on this podcast this morning, and we truly appreciate your valuable insights. like to do with microbiology and the crucial role of the vitamin k2 in our health and i'm sure our listeners will walk away with a much deeper understanding because of your experiences um it was a pleasure to speak with you and thank you again for sharing your knowledge and time thank you good luck thank you so much okay.